Hello, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Backstage Rainbow TV. It's me again, Alice Rouse, your most notorious groupie. And author of We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie, me. That's right, folks. Welcome back. Thank you so much to everybody who is watching the channel, subscribed or not, really supporting, really being a part of this, asking questions, and making this such a great place to hang out. I appreciate you guys so much. I can't even tell you. Thank you so much, so, so much. All right, guys, this week, and I hope you guys like the new intro. I, you know, my friend had advised me a while ago that it was too long, and it's true, it is. So I took her advice, I made a new one, I made a couple new ones, so you'll be seeing new intros along the way. All right, guys, so this week on Cocktails and Rocktails, we are going to talk about another time with Iron Maiden. This is years, I know I just posted the first Bruce Dickinson one a bit, a little bit back, but this is years later. And did I end up with Bruce? I don't know. We'll find out because, you know, there's always opening bands. I might know the opening band already. All right. And for this cocktail, we're going to go back to Bruce's beer. Hmm. Even, even Wigglers are worth going back to. All right, guys. So grab your troopers, kick up, kick up your feet, and let's have a little cocktails and rocktails, shall we? All right. Cheers, big ears. Mmm. I'd rather swallow Kip Winger. Not my flavor. It's not a bad pup beer, but it's not my flavor. It's a little too bitter for me. All right, so we are going to be talking about this tour. Let me see. This was Sunday, June 28th, 1992. Oh, did I just give away the ending? Oh, my God. <gasps> and is that? No, that's not Danny. That's Krista and Chuck and I. And there's my pass, and you can see me wearing it right there. So that's right. And oh, yeah, my book, you guys. All the link, everything down in the description for my book, my merchandise, everything you need. Today's cocktail, well, you can find that in the grocery store, usually. All right. So, this was Sunday, June 28th, 1992, obviously. The last uh, video I posted about Bruce Dickinson was 1987, so you do the math. This wasn't the first time I saw him, wasn't the last, well, the time before was the last. Because, as you can see, opening band was Testament. And I will put a bunch more pictures from this show that I've never showed before. Because you've all seen this one of Chuck and I on the internet. I've had that out there for years and years and years. So everybody has seen that. But there are more from this show that nobody has seen that I haven't put out there. But I'll put them at the end of the video. So stay tuned and watch. All right? So we go up. As you do. The band wasn't in town the night before. We go behind the Salt Palace, which I'll put the link to the uh, video, one of the first videos I did of downtown and behind the Salt Palace in the description below. So we go up behind the Salt Palace, all the buses are there, and who's the first person I see? None other than Rhodey Richie Barron. Richie Barron basically wallpapered the Salt Lake City Sisters, the Salt Lake City Welcoming Committee, Christy, Danny, and I, and Dave and he, He's basically responsible for wallpapering us into rock and roll the way we were. So, because he was with so many tours. But he was with Iron Maiden when we saw these guys. And he comes out of the bus with Nico McBride, who, you know, is an Iron Maiden, the rock star. And what do me and Kristen do? Because Danny, where was, oh, Danny was here. We just are like, Richie! So excited to see him because we're like, Puh! backstage. He'll go get bruised, do whatever. So he comes running up and Nico comes walking over and we start talking and getting our passes put on VIP and all that stuff and we go wandering in. And as you'll see in the photos to come, we were just hanging out. It was me, my older mate Krista, and Danny. Now, the roadies sometimes get bored. So we're just hanging out before the show. You know, this is about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe around noon. And the bands weren't there 
quite to the gig yet. It was not time for sound check. They usually show up around three o'clock for the bands to do sound check too if you're the opening band. Mark that down, groupie wannabes. That's what time you get to the gig if they're not in town the night before. Because that's when they're, they're coming. All right. Well, they'll be coming after you, after they get there. But you know what I mean. So anyway, we're just sitting there in one of the roadies, which you'll see in the picture, which he ended up, his nickname is the King of England, Shep. He ended up working for the Rolling Stones. I ran into him a thousand years later on the Rolling Stones. Because he is the drummer of, uh, he was Charlie Watts', Watts brother-in-law. I don't know on which side, but somehow he was. And long story about this. So anyway, they come up and they're English roadies and they're like, hey girls. And one of them turns around and is like, I'm going to get these girls. And you'll see in the picture where Krista's going, I don't think so. And he's like, all winking and stuff. That's not Shep, but Shep's in another picture. So anyway, they come up and they're like, hey ladies, what are you doing right now? You bored? Because we're bored. And all the guys wore headsets at the time, you know, especially up in the trusses so they could communicate and stuff with the... So we put it, they bring over a bunch of porn mags and we're like, what the fuck are these? What the fuck are these? What are they? And they're like, well... Would you put on the headsets and read the stories to the boys? Because, you know, there's always some sort of little smut stories in the magazines and stuff. And we're like, sure. So we've got on the headsets and we're just talking dirty. We're reading these stories. And the guys are like, whoa, stop it. And, you know, we're kind of, we've all got the headsets on. So we're interacting and taking different parts. And as we're doing that, we're waiting for the band, bands to arrive. And as I'm looking down and I'm reading... And I'm like, oh, this is, sorry, <laughs> this is another band, Screaming Jets from Australia. They weren't that big. But anyway, so I look up because I feel this, I feel someone walk up next to me that's not already there. And I look up and there's Bruce. And he's like, hello, love. How are you doing? Gives me a big hug, puts a big old kiss on my lips. I'm like, hey. Kind of being a little bit cold, he's like, I've got to go do an interview. He's like, but in 20, 30 minutes, he's like, why don't you come into my dressing room? Why won't I go into his dressing room? Because Chuck fucking Billy's there. And as much as I had fun, you know, with the Wiggler, that I've seen him a few times over the years to this point, I had way more fun with Chuck Billy and seen Chuck Billy just as much over the years. So I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Mwah, mwah. Hey. I had no intention to, because if you, when you look at the pictures, I'll put them in sequential order, because every time, and we never took pictures, but Krista's like, hey, let's take pictures this time. So we did, and if you look at the sequential order of the pictures, you look at me, you're looking around, where's Chuck, where's Chuck, where's Chuck? And then we get to this one. There's Chuck. Hi, Chuck. What's he doing? Testament is on tour right now, and actually they do have a beer as well. Chuck Billy has a beer, Testament out, but it's not available here in Utah, so I had to use the Iron Maiden, but I think I'd rather drink the Testament beer. Yeah. Anyway, so, you know, I'm just kind of like, okay, I'll keep Bruce on reserve just in case, but nope. The guys, all of a sudden, I take my headset off because we're done reading the stories, and the guys are getting too distracted. They're not able to do the work like they're supposed to because they're stopping to hear the porn and this was done a lot in the 80s we would put headset on and read porn to the roadies while they were working <laughs> not exactly productive but hey it made them happy and you know whatever makes them happy in a non-sweet conny kind of way we're cool so then the, we start to see the guys from Testament come in. Danny had dated their tour manager, Mark Workman. So we see him and stuff like that. And he's saying hi to us all. And then the guys start coming in. So Chris is like, let's take pictures. So take a picture with Chuck or with Alex Skolnick, with the other guys in the band, with Eric. And, I'm, and like I said, you'll see in every picture, I'm not paying attention to anything. I'm like, where the fuck is Chuck? Found him. Because I liked Chuck. He was so, to this day, he's one of the coolest motherfucking people. He's just kicked back. He doesn't judge anybody. He's so welcoming. He's so kind. And that's really rock and roll. And he kind of embodies the personality of rock and roll that I fell in love with. 
Very much so. Plus, he's so goddamn 420 friendly. Fuck yeah. We love 420 friendly. But, so yeah, there we were reading porn. And then all of a sudden, here comes Chuck. There's Chuck. Yay! So he comes up and he's like, hey, girl. And I just give him a big hug after that picture was taken. But I'm going to show you guys something in the pictures nobody ever notices. Okay, look at Chuck's belt line in, ooh, in that picture. This is an hour and a half later, and look at his belt line there. Nope. Didn't tuck the t-shirt back in. Because you know the second I saw him, I was like, come here, you big thirsty drink of, big tall drink of water, Chuck Billy. Every time, every time with him. Every time. My legs just went weak. Loved it. Loved to ride because he's tall. And he's got a nice build. So loved hanging out with him. Loved being thrown up against the wall by him. And bent over in the dressing room. But so we come out. We're hanging out. And then Chuck's got his arm. We're obviously together. We're hanging out. We're just walking out of the dressing room area. And this happens sometimes. This is kind of... Rock and roll tours collide. There are festivals. Opener bands, headlining bands, many headlining bands, many people at the festival, like Donington. And you, every group he has experienced, which I'm going to talk about this in another Rocky Talkie, has experienced when their rockers collide. When you are with one rocker and run into another rocker on that tour that you were with previously. It's never comfortable, and this was not comfor comfortable because as Chuck and I are coming out of Testament's backstage side, because usually, you know, over here at the Salt Palace, and there were two different sides, opening band and headliner. So as we were coming out, Bruce was coming to look for me because he I didn't show up into his dressing room. Well, he was a little bit bitter seeing me with Chuck and... That's fine. He can be bitter. I wasn't his girlfriend. It wasn't like we had some big road relationship or whatever. And he left his wife for a fucking some chick in France anyway. So, well, and his first wife, Jane, used to fuck every rock star but him. Nikki Six among them. So, which is accounted for Patty, his second wife. And then he left her just out of the blue for some fitness chick in France. So... I didn't feel bad because I knew he wasn't the perfect man and as cool as he could be, he's not perfect and he's not the sweetest guy at times. He has a mood and a temper and an ego. So he was all kinds of pissed off. It was a, don't ever expect to be backstage at another Iron Maiden concert. Don't worry, dude. I won't because that was one of Bruce's last tours with the band as well for a while. So there was no point for me to go see Iron Maiden anyway. <laughs> and like I said, he walks off in a huff and you could see him looking at me, you know, by the time Iron Maiden got on stage that night, like we're up on Testament stage, rocking out. And then I go with Chuck to the side of the stage to watch Iron Maiden for a little bit before we went out and we're drinking and stuff because this is the end of the show. He's trying to take me on tour. You can't really see very well, but Chuck's pulling my hand. Still his shirt's untucked. Because we were on the back of the bus for a while and we weren't doing anything because we'd already done things inside the Salt Palace with the locked door in the dressing room because they were only in town for the day. So sometimes you got to pinch hit. Can't always be a lady and have sex in the hotel room. So and people thought we were fucking around on the back of the bus, but Chuck and I were actually just standing there just shaking it around. So people would be out there going, fuck, man. And I'm like, yeah, fuck, man. If we were on the back of the back lounge of this bus, we'd probably knock the bus over. He's fun. So then, you know, when we went up on the side of the stage, let me get back to the regular story where I was. Well, Chuck and I were on the side of the stage. Bruce looks over and he just starts giving dirty looks and bitching and moaning. And between, the, you know, there's a guitar solo come, going on and he doesn't have to sing. So he runs over to our side of the stage. He's like, you need to get off the side of my fucking stage. Okay, bye. Won't be having my blowjob anymore, will you, Mr. Dickinson? No dick in this, Allison, ever again. That was the last time I saw Bruce. Not the last time I saw Chuck. But it was the last time I saw Bruce. And it was a really fun day because, you know, we got to read porn. I got to hang out with Chuck. I pissed off a legendary metal singer because he wasn't going to get his little pee-pee 
on me or in me or, you know, that stuff. So, and that happens when, when tours cross paths and there's like a festival and like one year at Castle Donington, it was Megadeth, David Lee Roth, Kiss, Poison, a lot of them. And like three of the guys asked me to go to Castle Donington with them. No. The only band who wasn't at Castle Donington was Metallica. So I went to hang out with Metallica. Because it's never pretty when... it. And you can ask. I'll talk to other groupies. And we will hold this discussion. And I'm going to do a vlog on this because... No rocker... Like, you don't talk about your other rockers as a groupie. And the rockers don't talk about their other groupies. You're just in the moment with the person that you are with in that moment. So when they actually see you with another rocker on accident, whew, it just beats the hell out of that rocker's ego like no tomorrow. And then it's a realization of, oh shit. Wow, I'm not the only one. And it sucks just as much for a rocker to see another group, baby. Like I said, we're going to talk about this because there's been some very ugly moments. But this was just one of them. Where Bruce threw a fucking Napoleon-style fit. A Napoleon-complex style fit. To get her out of here. She's never coming to an Iron Maid show again. Bummer. Did I look like I cared? No. Like I said... Along the way, groupies just drop the bands away. They just sort of stop going to the ones that they don't care about and don't have a huge relationship or significance or love the most. And Iron Maiden happened to be part of that casualty, and it would piss them off because it was for the opening band who wasn't as big as Iron Maiden, and we influenced them. How dare that groupie go with someone besides a metal god such as me? I'm going to tell you who the true metal god is and one of the nicest people you've ever met that would never, ever freak out like that. Chuck Billy. So, everybody raise a glass to Chuck Billy. That's what I think about you, Bruce. Like I said, wigglers are fun for a moment, but they're not that fun for a long time. If you keep wiggling, oh, God, and Bruce was a wiggler, but Chuck was a man in bed, so I made the right choice. So there you guys go. That was the last day. You've already heard the first day I met Bruce Dickinson. This was the last. And I didn't shed a tear. Oh, boo-hoo. Still won't. Because Bruce, as a personality, is kind of an asshole. And I figured that out over the years. And Chuck Billy is not. And they're on tour right now. So you guys go support Testament, buy their beer, and go be 420 friendly with Chuck Billy. All right, guys. Thanks again for everybody that's tuning in. Do not forget that everything you want, my book, everything is down in the description. Hell, my book is on walmart.com. Just type my name in and blam, there it is. Paperback is available. A, a lot of places, but mostly Amazon. That's where I make the money. I make a lot less money off the book if you buy it through Walmart because they pay a distributor discounted price. And that I don't get paid when you buy it from Walmart, except for that discounted price. I get a smaller portion. So buy my book. Link is down in the description because I'm going to stop telling my stories. I'm just going to kind of turn this format into a podcast style where we talk about different realities of rock and roll, different dynamics, different groupies. Good changes are coming, guys. And don't forget to look at all the pictures at the end of the video because you're going to see some fun and pictures that have never been seen before. So again, thank you guys for all the love and support. And for all the scammy to bars haters, I don't see what you're saying because I just, YouTube blocks you guys before I can even see your comments. It's not even worth the hate. It's not worth the energy to have the hate towards me because you don't want to see reality and you prefer to wear rose colored glasses. How Trumponian of you. All right guys, thanks again for all the love. Don't forget to hit the subscribe. Hit the bells, hit my share, and we'll see you next week for some more Cocktails and Rocktails. Cheers, big ears. <laughs>